online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, AfterBuzz TV. After Buzz TV. The destination for TV superfans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Cozy Was After Show here at AfterBuzz TV. We are doing a season three, episode five, Scared Straight. I am Cord Gay, and with me, I've got two lovely, beautiful ladies. Gabby over there. Yes, uh, second time here. I'm Yay. excited to be back. We needed a two peat. We yeah. did. We did. <laughs> and then we've got Danielle coming back. Whoop, whoop. I'm glad to be back. Yeah. Oh my gosh, two weeks off. I know. I was having withdrawals. You missed out. I did. You I did. missed out on two prime episodes, and then this one was like, Meh. I agree. Well, let's talk about our overall thoughts on this episode. What'd you guys think? I love all the episodes. <laughs> I don't hate on this show. Um, and I think that there was some drama that we saw unfold. So I'm a big fan of that, <laughs> if anyone knows me out there. Um, I don't know. I, I loved it. I love these characters. I think this girl cast is ultimate. They are the total package. So it's a good episode for me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Nice. Danielle? I, I was kind of like bummed about this episode because I felt like the last two were so dramatic mm -hmm. and this one was like, uh, let's come up with some storylines for this week. Like, I don't know. It was just random. Cameron's brother. I don't know. No, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you there compared to the thoughts. other previous episodes. It wasn't as exciting. Yeah. Um, I wasn't as invested with Quinn. Sorry, it just wasn't. Yeah. Ariane's brother, and then obviously Eva Marie and the gun story. It just it felt a little choppy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the surgery thing. It's just like ongoing thing. I think mm -hmm. next week's going to be interesting, but for sure. And back to back, right? Is yeah. Is it two episodes? Is it two episodes? I think so. Next week. I don't know. I thought. I mean, I saw what was coming up, but it was a teaser for two. Episodes. I read on E Online. Oh, oh, I should just wait till prediction. No, you can but say. I read on E Online. It's back to back episodes next week. Oh. So we got. We'll I hope have that's a lot not a bad cover. thing because sometimes when they do back to back episodes. It means the show's not doing well, so they push it out. You know oh, what? No, it could not. it could be because of the pay per view in the following week after, oh, okay. right? Is hoping something or it might be I forget when the pay per view is, but they don't maybe don't want to like yeah have know. the same yeah. audience yeah. 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 So who knows? I agree. But let's talk about this episode because we have a lot yes. going on. Some not as interesting as other storylines, but. We start off with the Bella twins out eating lunch, and they don't know what a seal is. Is that oh right? Oh my god! <laughs> is that right? Yeah, that was right. Uh, I, I, I know they have to be smarter than that. They have to be. That was completely played. But they're sitting there and they're talking about Daniel Bryan, and basically what it comes down to is Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson wants to not have surgery and go the green way in healing mm -hmm. himself. What do you guys think of all this? I'm kind of over the green thing with them. <laughs> like, okay, I, I understand it, but at the same time with an injury, and don't get me wrong, I very much believe in acupuncture. I do, to a certain extent. When you have an injury like that and you're told you need to get surgery, what? Well, what's green about that like yeah. get surgery and then if you don't want to take painkillers then don't take painkillers but I feel like for his career yeah he needed and obviously he did it but well I agree with you because also his his physical health is dependent on making money and health mm -hmm. and ha having his career so he needs to speed up that process yeah so I don't know how much of that is true to what he really believes in or how much Total Diva is kind of playing it up. What do you think, yeah. Abby? I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Okay. <laughs> I am a little bit greener than I used to be. Plus, I can relate to Daniel Bryan because I see that he doesn't really want to take a risk with a doctor fixing things in his body and manipulating stuff inside that could potentially be either fatal or cause another problem. Totally get it because it's a scary thing. Just like we saw Trinity in last episode, mm -hmm. she doesn't want to deal with her issues in the ovaries because she doesn't want to lose another one. Then she may not be able to have kids. So I understand why they want to put it off because, you know, once you accept a career like this, you are going to suffer 
serious things and surgery is always going to be that option and unfortunately yeah it probably would help him to heal faster but it's scary to go under the knife it really I'm sure. is yeah. but do you think that um nikki has a point that once you have surgery it's it's totally fine and she feels better than ever or do you guys kind of agree that going the slow way with the green way would be probably ultimately the better decision for your body because you guys are both mm-hmm. very healthy so i think brie is right in the sense that you know, when she says to Nikki, you've had all these surgeries on your knee, this, that, and the other, Are, you're going to tell me you don't feel as good as you felt beforehand. Uh-huh. And I'm sure that's what it is because they tell dancers that, they tell people in fitness that yeah. if you're super athletic and you're having injuries all the time or surgeries or not even any of that stuff and you're just working on those muscles and joints, regardless, you're going to have issues when you're older. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, you may not have them now, but you're going to feel it later. It's true. And with surgery, you're going to feel it after. You're always going to feel that area, you know, come up, whether it's weather conditions or, you know, yeah. certain things in your environment. You're going to feel it. So it's not always a fix one, two, three year old better and back to brand new. Yeah. I don't think it will. I don't think it will ever become that way. No. It's just yeah. a quick fix to them getting back in the game and making money, really. And clearly, I think John Cena, too, has been there, done that. And so that's why Nikki comes from that place. I, that's the thing with, with John Cena. He's very influential when it comes to Nikki's mindset. Yeah. Right? Like, he just says, whoa, one, two, fix it up. I don't know what the big deal is. And yeah. She's like, oh, my god. She's gosh. like, yeah, I should tell Brie that. Exactly. And she, she pretty much did. And they had yeah. an argument about it and everything. But, you know... Daniel Bryan's hurting, or Brian Danielson's really hurting. He could barely eat dinner because he yeah. got interrupted by this twitch in his arm mm-hmm. or whatever. So I don't know where that's going. I mean, he's he's going to get that fixed. And in the meantime, Brie had her moment back into the WWE where she was yeah. kind of in the audience. She was really excited about Stephanie Mc- having a storyline with Stephanie McMahon, and that was cool. And I think that was for her, she... It showed that she demonstrated that she really wanted Daniel Bryan to get back into and make money. And yeah, the fact that he's not doing so well, he had to go back out in Money in the Bank and say more that he's going to be gone for a lot longer. Do they have an expected time? Because he's still not back. He, he's still not back, and we still don't really know when he's coming yeah. back. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's going to be a surprise when he does, anyways, right? But. I, I think there's like constant news that people read and yeah. so we can kind of sense when it's coming closer. Right. But Do we know if he's actually had surgery post this filming? He's yeah, had he surgery, did. yeah. Okay, he did. I think he had surgery in May, May, 4, mm-hmm. May 14th. He's had, he had something. to, it came to that point. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, being a wrestler, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's his last one where he has to go under the knife. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because when we're talking about surgery and Nikki's like, I'm fine. I'm thinking breast implants, breast implants. Yeah, I'm right. The whole time. True time. story. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's it's cake for her. Yeah. She's like, it's fine. Whatever you want to adjust on me. It's good. Yeah. My See, nose. that's the one thing I don't understand with wrestling. How these girls, because Rosa has it too. How yeah. they have implants and do the things that they do without bursting the Could bubble. Could you imagine? Like, I, no, I can't. I think about if I had breast <laughs> implants, like I wouldn't be able to run or do anything i, I just feel like let alone like you down. Yeah. ones that are massively big let's talk about rosa mendez real quick because oh, yeah. we just she saw her, her for a second and she had a photo shoot that was supposed to be somewhat tame but she ended up having to cut her wardrobe wardrobe yeah and it just got kind of Mm, sexy. I think she's in the wrong industry. She needs to be working for Playboy and yes. WWE. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes, I agree. She's it's, it's a little much because they are so big. It's a little much when you have a wardrobe slip. Like it's right there. Oh. Now, I was I was thinking about it too. Um, she's an older woman. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm thinking uh, at that age, wouldn't you be comfortable about, about your body at that point? You know, I'm just. She really didn't need it. She looked fine before. Mm. I, yeah. Coming from a production standpoint, I think that is completely pre-produced. <laughs> you that so? whole scene. Uh-huh. I think they were just like, can you do this? Cut it up a little bit. Stick your boobs out. Because it was so totally. fake. Then the photographer was like, okay, cover it up. And she went to button it. And then the next shot we see is her in the photo shoot with it unbuttoned. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it yeah. just didn't seem legitimate to me. And yeah, she really cut up her jean 
shirt. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Who goes to those lengths? Yeah. Like, just buy a crop top. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We're so harsh on production on this panel, I know. right? We're always like, I think they clipped that together. <laughs> yeah. We're like, really? They? <laughs> We're like, trying to be like all scientists about it. <laughs> um, let's talk about Ariane because she made her comeback this week. Uh, she's having lunch with Eva Marie. And she gets a phone call from her mom that her 15-year-old brother, Quinn, is almost gang banging. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, she, you know, she's talking about how she's having a great time at NXT. She's learning a lot. She's got bruises. But she has to go back to LA and fix this problem between her mom and her brother. So she finds her brother. Oh, and Vincent sighting. I love Vincent. Oh, I love him too. Do you like him? I like him a lot. Yeah. I think he's good for her. He kind of whips her into shape. Yep. Yeah. And mm-hmm. he's like so soft and sweet and tender. And I, ugh, I like him. <laughs> tender. Oh my God. I'm mean, tender hearted. <laughs> tender hearted. Um, so she goes back, and Vincent and her, and her, they decide to go look for Quinn. And he ends up being in the neighborhood with some guys that we don't know because they were blurred. Mm-hmm. And what did they find? Because they find was it a bong? A they bong. Broke it? I'm I'm okay. just gonna assume really? it was a bong. Like I what it was did something you think? Else. What did you think it was? Maybe or something? No, I was thinking. Well, it could have been alcohol. It was a blue bottle. Yeah. And I was wondering, does cough medicine come in glass bottles or only plastic? I think maybe um, prescription oh. cough medicine may. Yeah, because a lot of kids these days are using cough medicine with coca-cola and it's called leaning and it's really dangerous it's bizarre i've never heard of that yeah i recently figured this out because i was on the street and a neighbor was talking about it wow and I was like, what is that i had no idea but it's really popular amongst the kids these days and a lot of people are doing it and it's just it's horrible for you so anyone that's out yeah. there if you're messing with drugs get off them so it's you ridiculous. think it's that? Well, because it was just a weird substance on the floor, and, and the glass was blue. I don't know. I was trying to think of what I it know. could be. I know. I wanted them to, because they stopped it right after she broke the glass yeah. for commercial break, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, please tell us what it is. And they didn't. Yeah. Could have been alcohol, but why would you be drinking on the street on the side of the... I don't know. I just. I didn't see yeah. any yeah. liquid, though, with it. Yeah, like, there's no liquid. It yeah, been, it just it could seemed, been a bong. I, I think could've I'm been. going with either like a bong or a pipe, but... But Who that's knows? legal in California, yeah. so it's not even... Yeah, but you still don't want your kids doing it. You don't want your kids doing it, but what if he had cancer or something? We didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't know his life story. Yeah, maybe we don't. Maybe it's a prescription. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Or maybe maybe production brought it over there and said, hey, will you break this? Yeah, maybe that. I don't know. So many options. What did you guys think of Quinn and um, Ariane's... Uh, coming by and stopping him from hanging out with his friends. Do you think that that was well deserved? Do you think it was exaggerated? What did you think? And then she had to intervene and have tattoo her ex gangbanging friend come by. And oh my set gosh, straight. so intense. Yeah, I thought it was a little over the top for that. I mean, I understand that Ariane clearly is maybe the glue that holds the family together, but when you're at his at Quentin's age. You really don't care what anyone says. Mm-hmm. If if you can recall back to when you're, I don't know, how old did they say he was? Like 15. 14, 15? 15. Yeah, you just don't want to listen to anyone. And you do kind of need to be scared straight. So I liked the intervention part because I feel like that is the only hope for people. But I don't, I don't believe that that kind of intervention would scare him to the point of, okay, I'm going to stop doing it. Right? I disagree. I Maybe. think Maybe. she needed to be harsh on him to get a point across because people aren't going to be receptive really unless you like kick it into them yeah. pretty much and even mm-hmm. then it's hard but i think what she did with the intervention with those ex you know former gang members was so necessary because it's like those reality shows you see on tv where and scared straight yeah, or scared something straight, yeah things like that yeah. where they're in jail or whatever and they have to experience these old inmates telling them don't do this or you're gonna wind up like me yeah I think they need that kind of person in their life to be like, oh, this guy seems like he's cool, but look, he's telling me to not act like a brat. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know? I thought it was funny when I was thinking, these gangsters used, uh, used to be these G guys, and now they're on Total Divas. Yeah. Like, and his oh, one of the guys' face was so, I mean, the tatted up oh, face my and gosh. stuff. And he was really kind of harsh, too. So uh, when he was talking, I was like, I'd be uh, kind of scared. He was scary. Yeah. Definitely. But it did, it did, quote unquote, kind of whip him up into shape because he promised his mom he's going to be in contact. He's going to pick up his phone moving forward. I wasn't buying any of what he was selling. At yeah, all. <laughs> this this storyline in particular is one that I'm thinking, 
really they had to fill it in somehow. I, I would have almost rather have watched um, Ariana Natty slash Cameron's. Pro- <laughs> no, not that. Uh, Cameron's progression in, at NXT or something. You yeah. Know? Like how she got the bruises, how she's doing. Mm-hmm. That would have been more interesting for me. Yeah, but me too. That would have been cool. But I actually don't mind this storyline. I know you guys are kind of <laughs> against this episode, but I... Can, I feel like it's a human aspect that a lot of people can relate to. Maybe mm-hmm. they have a younger brother mm-hmm. or maybe a family member that's gone down the wrong path. That's true. Is. So in that sense, I think it's good to be on a TV show. It's going to encourage other people to kind of support their family and that's yeah. a good maybe point. encourage a uh, brat kid to get out of that lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Well you said. Know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a very good point. Gosh, I feel like we need to be nicer. I know. I'm like, animal. okay, bye. We just want the girly Girl, bye. stuff. I know. <laughs> We're like, we want the hair pulling. We're Summer Rae and Natty. Um, but really, let's talk about Eva Marie and her yeah. man. They're in a car, and they, Jonathan's telling Eva Marie, look, there was a break-in by our neighbors, and he got shot and robbed. And now I want to get a gun. <laughs> and Eva Marie's like, that's not an argument you're going to win. Yeah. Yet she goes to a, a gun, a gun range, range, shooting range, and shoots a well, she sh- assault rifle, something kind of big. Yeah, it was big. Yeah, I was like, wow, that's a really big first gun. I, I'm sure you guys have gone before, right? Really? Never. I've gone not to a shooting range, but in Arizona, <laughs> this won't surprise you, but you know, it's just like yeah. you can go out in the desert land and hit targets and stuff. I've done that before, but I've done it I before. I've done an indoor shooting range and an outdoor one. And I, I could have sworn you, I just imagine you doing that stuff because you're really? badass. Yeah. Thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> now I'll you need the to badass do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm actually honestly like scared of guns. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even want to hold one because I know that in like five seconds you can actually murder someone with it and it freaks me it's out. It's so true. Yeah. So what did you think of this uh, this story what, or storyline or whatever? I think Eva Marie is totally in her right. Uh-huh. They're married now. I think... At this point, you need to consult your wife before you make decisions, and she needs to consult you before she makes decisions. Yeah. You know, and hopefully moving forward, that's what happens. But I also thought it was ironic that Jonathan brought up, okay, well, we're either going to get her an assault rifle or a handgun. An assault rifle is in the question? Yeah. What? That's yeah. huge. I think that's a little overboard. If you're going to protect yourself, <laughs> a handgun is fine. Yeah. You're, unless you're trying to literally murder somebody then you don't need an assault rifle in your yeah. home. You're not going hunting. So I thought it was a little over-exaggerated, and I definitely agree with Eva Marie's point. I don't agree with guns. I think if you have them for safety, fine, keep them away. But most of the time, even if they're in a safe, the kids get to them and someone winds up dying. So I just hate it. Yeah, I, I was. that's a very debatable thing, having a gun in the household or not. Some people are completely... It's such a hot topic right now, it too. Is. Like, I don't want to, like, I'm, like, kind of scared of You kind of don't want to muddy the waters. Yeah. You but you know what would be a good so idea, excited. you guys? I think that, for especially for, uh, not countries, uh, states like Texas in the U.S., mm-hmm. where it's, you know, big on guns, what if they made something where you had a gun, but you could drop it off or leave it somewhere overnight or there's somewhere to put it that would be safe i mean if it's then, the, if it's for the protection of your home it's a different story but a lot of people go hunting yeah. with it so it's a different story oh, I see. so if you're going hunting maybe there could be a place wherever you go hunting to keep it in a locker there yeah you know what i mean or for anywhere in the united states that wants to have gun control but then what will be the point of having your gun if you want to if it's for self um if it's for you know home protection, protection it's a different story but if it's for hunting purposes and things like that I see. in the woods then i feel like there should be a place that when you do those things you can like leave it there mm-hmm. instead yeah. of bringing it home mm. like assault rifles yeah well, those are i mean come on yeah <laughs> um i noticed also and i, I think i tweeted this Eva Marie asked Jonathan to pick up her luggage and bring it upstairs. And I'm thinking, this girl's a wrestler and she can't pick up her suitcase. But I feel like she's just the type that's like, babe, will you do it for me? Like, oh you can hear gosh. it in her voice. Yeah. She just wanted to be taken care of. Clearly, he had just got there, right? So, like, or she, she had just got she there. She just got there. And then she finds the gun in yeah. the house and she's upset. And she goes to this round table with Natty. And which which Uso was it? I think Naomi's man, right? Uh, Jay, Jimmy. Okay, well one of them. Okay. And one of the Usos. And Titus O'Neil is in there. Titus again with I the love Titus, Titus yeah. O'Neil. 
Do you like Titus? I love them, yeah. He's They're all good. He's a really good wrestler. Anyways, he's always bringing comic relief. I really hope they bring more of him His on. His storylines are funny. I mean, I don't really like the Slater Gator thing. Oh, but I don't like the Slater Gator no. thing either. <laughs> right Finally. Now, right. I know, right? Because most people are like, oh, I like yeah, it. I oh. it. He's currently wrestling with this guy named Heath Slater as a tag team. Okay. And for me, they just don't fit. And I guess for Gabby as well, just no. not, not a good fit. Fine. But most people like them. <laughs> Um, Slater Gator. Um, I'm anyways. curious to see if he'll end up more on next season because I feel like don't you feel like they're bringing him around a little bit even if for just I would a few love minutes. To see him more, but yeah. how would he tie in? I Maybe he's know. dating somebody on the cast. Who would he be dating? Everyone's taken. Summer Eva? Rosa. Oh, no. or Rosa. Sorry, I was Eva. 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 Affair. Ooh, I know. Oh, that was not I'm sorry. Her, though. Rosa. <laughs> Eva Mendez. Uh, I think Rosa likes women. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. She likes both. Maybe. I think she likes both. I think she likes both. Um, okay, and I think wow, that about wraps it up. Was there no topic? No way. Do you have anything else you want to touch base on, Gabby? You got some notes over there. Yeah, I you, yeah, you know I it. always do. Um I do like how Eva Marie and Jonathan, how she expressed her issue with it, and Jonathan was right away, yeah, I I messed up. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's and the issue way. really was yeah. communication there. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. tell me you're going to do it before mm-hmm. you do it. I was impressed because even Marie has really grown um, on this show yeah. from being a villain to just someone that actually makes sense from time to time and mm-hmm. actually um, we can get behind, you know? And especially in this particular episode, I'm going to give her kudos because I totally understood where she was coming from and she did the right thing yeah. by confronting it. I agree. So. Um, I also want to go off what you were saying earlier about John Cena. Yeah. With Nikki in the gym. Yeah. Um, this relationship is very interesting to me because like you both brought up, she's easily manipulated by or convinced by other people's opinions. Mm-hmm. It's like once you say something that kind of makes sense to her, she'll side with it. Yeah. And John Cena is kind of an extremist, I think. He thinks one way or the other it's black and white with him. So this relationship is definitely, I can't wait to see it kind of progress through the seasons because it's just been an interesting ride so far. Yeah. I mean, all of his, it seems like everything he believes in, she has to believe in to be with him. Mm. The kids, the family, the marriage. That's interesting. That whole aspect. Mm-hmm. It's like she keeps sacrificing her own ideals to conform to what he wants. Which might yeah. eventually blow up in her face. Yeah, mm-hmm. it could. Yeah. But she's she is enjoying that trade off with the lifestyle of what he has to offer, which is a lot of stuff that she enjoys, like the lavish life, the square foot massive house where she can hide forever if she wanted to. <laughs> hide a baby. Yeah. I don't know. But all right, so let's um talk about some news and gossip. After Buzz TV News. That's what's very fast. Someone had the button ready to go. <laughs> um, so first one, uh, actually the only news I have is about about a week ago in a recent report from Wrestling Observer Newsletter, mm-hmm. it was reveal- revealed that Vince, Vince is like this, the head of WWE, mm-hmm. has a role in place that actually prohibits anyone on the show of Total Divas to carry the Divas title. So apparently, really? right? Isn't that crazy? So apparently, the the anyone on the show, a Total Diva, cannot carry the title. What? Uh. I know. Okay, let me read a little bit more. It says, right now, Vince McMahon has had and still has a rule that nobody from Total Divas can get the Divas title. People have said that privately, and Brie Bella let it slip during an interview, and it's been confirmed to us that as of right now, that's the rule. It's one of those rules that can change tomorrow, and in fact, the person who told us the rule wondered if Vince would at the last minute change his mind and put the belt on Nikki, since there's so much focus on Nikki right now. But instead of the belt from TV, it looks like they're going with a feud over who has the rights to the Bella's last name. So that's what they're going to end up going with. Hmm. That is insane. Isn't to find that interesting? Out. Yeah. And yeah. they always bring it up on the show because Nikki's like, oh, this is my chance, Naomi. Every now and then yeah. says, this is my chance. So, Trinity. I want I Naomi to yeah. get it. Yeah, everyone wants or Naomi. Trinity. Na- or Natty or Naomi or Trinity yeah. to get it. All of them, yeah, they're, they always talk about it. Mm-hmm. So, it's interesting that that's a rule. Yeah, I mean, granted, it says that it can change, but that is the rule. That I understand why he's doing it, though. Yeah. 
he's doing it so he doesn't piss off the girls that are not on the show because then they're going to think, well, you're giving them all this attention. What are we here for? Mm -hmm. And you're only giving them the belt because of Total Divas. I could see that being a problem. But at the same time, it would I agree with you, but it would also help if, in a way, in many ways, if one of the divas from the show had the, the title to make the inner laugh intertwine yeah. effectively, right? For someone and it's who not that some of them don't deserve it. Right. Like, for sure, you know? Natty, yeah, Trinity. that's true. Some of them do deserve it. Naomi, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. If it so. was like a bunch of Eva Marie's on the show, obviously <laughs> you wouldn't, <laughs> sorry, but wrestling-wise, wrestling-wise. Rosa Mendes is not that much better than Eva Marie. But I shouldn't be saying that. I'm sorry. That's just opinion. You know, some people think that she's great. It's fine. It could be controversial, though, between, like, AJ, because AJ declined Total Divas. Yeah. And she has the belt. Yeah. You know, in comparison to the girls. Did, the she did decline it? Like, I, she I, got that that's offer? That's what I heard, that yeah. she declined it. Is that, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was, I mean, always... I had always thought that. I can't that imagine was. her being on Total Diva. She's kind of the anti diva. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah. She said it on the show, mm. on main event, like a while ago. She said in commentary, like, no, I didn't want to be on that show. I declined. Like, she's actually oh, said it on yeah. TV. Well, there you go. That's probably true. Yep. That's so. why so you guys got to watch main event. Like, don't leave us out of the venture. No, <laughs> main event's awesome. It's got, it's got a lot of good matches. One of yeah. my favorite matches from last year was Cesaro versus. Um, Kofi and that was a really good match. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, there's been some more of that too. Yeah, you should watch wrestling. I know, this. I need to. <laughs> I need to. I need to hop on the bandwagon. <laughs> okay, and now I want to mention some viewer a viewer comment that I want to remain anonymous, but uh, they said feel free to mention this. Um, it basically talks about she or he says i heard you say in the video that it's weird for you to hear john cena talk dirty because he's such a quote-unquote good guy which made me wonder if you've ever seen his interview with howard stern oh i just recently watched okay. it so <sighs> in case you're not aware no. oh my god i love this yes john john cena had an interview with howard stern a couple years ago and you know howard stern brings out the raunchy and the raw oh in you. for yes. sure and, yeah and basically what it comes down to is john cena is talks about women and his experiences with women and how he likes fat women as well yes. and it's like how he like doesn't discriminate how he like does it does it all and stuff and interesting Kyrie's blushing i i loved this interview i need to go watch it was this really good ASAP. it was yeah. good okay yeah. so thank you viewer for pointing that out and i wanted to ask you guys after listening to that interview, or I'll send it to you after yeah. hearing a little bit of what you heard, does that change your perspective on John Cena? <laughs> For me, not really, but however, I haven't listened to it yet, so ask me next week. But Howard Stern, like you said, he just brings out the raunchy in everyone. Yeah. Like, you, me, or you could be yeah. sitting with him, and we'd probably sound raunchy. So, and I'm like totally straight. Like, like you are you? <laughs> No, I, Come on. I don't know. <laughs> yes. There's got to be a side. <laughs> Maybe. Back in the day. I think we're confusing raunchy with just sexual talk. Because yeah. I don't think that interview was raunchy at all. I feel like Howard Stern is the only person really out there capable of talking to people about intimate details. Mm -hmm. And I respect John Cena for this interview because the way he gave it, like he just said it how it was was very respectful with his words. Yeah, he's so good at that. And I am so impressed with the fact that he has no judgment on other people based on what you look like. I mean, anything, nothing. He has no judgment, and I really appreciate that. And that's a great quality to find in a guy. He doesn't look at you for, you know, your size, your name, where <laughs> you're from, you know, all that stuff. He's a legitimate stand-up guy. So does that elevate... Um like how he is for you yes because if you can sit there in an interview in front of millions of people and say i did this and i did that which a lot of people a lot of men would be embarrassed to admit yeah. those things it's true it shows that you know you have a lot of confidence you're very secure with yourself and i respect that in him and that's obviously why he's so successful the totally. guy has a crazy work ethic he's a good person mm -hmm. there's so many elements to john cena that like it, it really made me more of a fan by watching that, and I recently watched That's that. That's great. I, I gotta send it to you. Yeah, I want to see it. I'll send it to you. He seems like a pretty real person, though, which I love about him. Like you said, like he seems 
to shoot us straight down to earth. And like. he's so good at speaking. Yeah, Honestly, like, you can put him on anything. Howard Stern, HLN, Good Morning America, and he just sells the WWE. He's, like, a great company guy. Yeah. Um, a lot of fans have these mixed feelings. Like, if he, whenever he comes out, people are, half the audience are saying, you know, boo Cena and the other one. Cena sucks and the other ones are saying. Because of that? Internet? No, just in oh. general. Oh, okay. It's, it's just halves. Half of the people hate him, half of the people love him. I don't so know you could hate him. Weird. He's so lovable. I don't know about lovable. No? But I would say he's he's Okay, a but I guy. only watch the show, so. <laughs> yeah. As he's a lovable per, as a human being outside of yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. yeah. I think Nikki's lucky to have him in some ways. Oh yeah. She is, and yeah. hopefully For he sure. can loosen up a little bit. Yes. Yes. And that's that being said, that's why you viewers stop over to our YouTube and leave a comment. Let us know what you think because we like to discuss it sometimes on the YouTube channel, sometimes on iTunes where you can rate us, mm-hmm. sometimes right here where we'll discuss it. Yes. Yeah. And I think that about completes our after show. So in the meantime, where can everyone follow you, lovely ladies? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Danielle Elise P and on Instagram at Danielle Pacenti. You can follow me at Gabby LO87 on Instagram and Gabrielle underscore Loren on Twitter and main event on Wednesday nights. And you can follow me on Twitter as well as Instagram, K-A-O-R-I-O-U-S Kaorius. And you can follow the whole entire Afterbus crew here at Afterbus TV. We'll catch you guys next week. See ya. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Afterbuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the Afterbuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. <laughs> 